But what we're talking about instead is allowing small businesses to invest. And so when we did that, we actually did that in the first quarter of 2003. And I have a series of graphs here that show the result of doing that. Let's just take a look at this. The black vertical line on this graph is the first quarter uh, or, or part way into uh, 2003. If the gentleman would is, briefly yield, I suspect that line is May 28th uh, of uh, 2003. I happen to remember that's the date that President Bush signed the 2003 tax cuts. Um, and, and really the only reason I remember that is because it's my birthday. It was a great second, president. Second quarter. I stand corrected. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. The second quarter of 2003 is the black line that you see here. And this, this first chart is gross domestic product of the United States. Now, if you take a look at the, the things on the left side of the chart that are in red, this includes a bunch of kind of nice tax cuts which uh, give better deductions for having kids and a lot of feel-good kind of stuff. So it's not just any tax cut that makes a difference. Your point is you're investing in productivity. When you get to the second quarter of 2003, we did one major tax cut, and that was dividends and capital gains, which immediately put money back into the pockets. It's not really put money back in. We just never took it out of the pockets of the small businessmen who made investments and took risks. And take a look at what happens on the average. This is going all the way out to 2007. The average gross domestic product, 1.1% before that tax cut, after it, you see that the average has jumped a couple of percent in gross domestic product. Now that's an interesting chart. Let's take a look at the next one. What happens to go along with gross domestic product? Let's take a look at jobs. This is job creation. Everything below the line means we're losing jobs, as we are right now in the economy. The second quarter of 2000, uh, you are right, May 2003. You take a look and you see all of this job growth. An average loss of 99,000 jobs in the first couple of years as we were uh, inherited the recession in 2001, and a gain of 147,000 jobs following. That is the effect of letting small business turn them loose and let them be productive. Now here's the thing that I find most amazing, and that is the fact that when you do this, the government cuts taxes, and guess what happens to the money we have, the revenue? We'll take a look at the third chart. There again, May of 2003, a low point in federal revenue. As the economy gets going, federal revenue takes off like a skyrocket. So what do you solve? Everybody is, is, is more wealthy, there are more jobs, and not only federal but state governments have more money to spend. To your point, gentlemen, I thought some specifics, though. This isn't theory. This is what JFK did. This is what Ronald Reagan did. And this is what happened under the Bush administration with that key tax cut. Not just any tax cut, but the one that empowers Americans and gets the government's big fist out of their pocketbooks. I yield, gentlemen. Continue. And, and briefly, the gentleman of uh, Missouri, thank you. Um, uh, I'd point out here that we are, uh, we are sociologists in the end in this country. And these are definitive... I don't want to be any kind of socialist, gentlemen. <laughs> we, are, we are definitive uh, on the economic analysis that you've laid out. It is stark, it's clear, the line's vertical there, and each one of those charts that you showed. Um, but what it really reflects is the sociology of human nature. When human nature concludes that if they, if they work and earn and someone else gets the proceeds of that, if someone else gets the, gets the benefit of the labor, then the reward for the labor is diminished. That means there's less labor that gets done. And as people figure that out, as the tax rates go up, the conclusion is I'll risk less capital and I'll put less effort in and I'll spend more time with my family or my golf clubs or my fishing pole. That equation is demonstrated there in the red and in the green vertical bars that you have. And in the end, our effort again is back to get the maximum increase and get the maximum annual average productivity out of every American. At Congressman the same time, King, I think you've life. just given us a rather eloquent description of just basically saying free enterprise does work, doesn't it?